You're able to see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, now today we're going to look at a momentum equation and then go through a few examples. Okay. So, um, we, we, we derive a momentum equation um, with the same procedure on the mass conservation. So if you forget how to derive a mass conservation equation, then uh, you go back to the previous slides. Um, just a note, when we derive for um, a momentum equation, we need to focus on control volume, uh, or control volume coordinates. Um, and our our control volume coordinates uh, is either uh, uh, at rest or uh, moving. Yeah? So there's a constant value for for our control volume coordinates there. Okay. So the word momentum itself, if you call, recall back what you learned in your physics, uh, momentum equal to mv. Yeah? Momentum equal to mv you take the mass times the velocity, okay? Um, so we all start with the second Newton law, which is F equal to MA. So here, uh, given by a, a mathematic model or relationship, F equal to differentiation of your uh, momentum of the system. So then you'll get your, uh, your forces in the system, okay? So your P in the integration here, uh, in the derivation here, your line linear momentum of the system given by this uh, mathematics uh, equation. So uh, linear momentum, momentum equal to mass times velocity. So we know that uh, uh, when we derive our momentum equation, our control volume uh, coordinate is either moving or at rest. So our velocity component or vector here is a constant value. So the only thing that we can integrate for our momentum, uh, mv, so it's only the, uh, the mass component, okay? So uh, when you integrate your, want to get your momentum, you take your velocity and integrate with the change of uh, mass. So, um, and then uh, when you integrate, Okay, so, all right. And then um, when you consider a momentum equation, we will look at uh, two forces, which is surface force and body force. So on the screen here, you will see our F equal to uh, body force, FB, plus the surface force, uh, uh, FS, okay? And our, uh, we use a general uh, differentiation equation for our system. We know that um, our, our system consists of uh, control volume and control surfaces. So when we talk about momentum, we take our what happened in our control volume plus what happened in our control surface. So this is what uh, the general equation when we um, consider the effect of momentum inside the system. And we replace uh, some term inside this equation, it become our momentum equation. So we replace our N with our momentum, linear momentum. We replace our N here with our velocity. Then we will get our momentum. Right, integrate of rho dv, you get m. Integrate v times dA, you get your um, um, your mass also. Rho v dot dA, you will get your mass flow rate. So you modify the general uh, presentation of our differential equation, which is a second line on the screen here, with p. Right, with P divided by T, P again is a linear momentum, huh? linear momentum, okay. Uh, equal to integration of what happened in the CV, CV is the control volume, V is the velocity, 
Row DV plus integration of CS is the control surfaces um, V row V dot DA. Okay. Now, um, a, a, a quick question for you. Uh, Pritiba, what is P inside this equation? Try again, ask again, sir. What is the P that you see on the screen here? What is the P represent? Uh, P represent pressure, sir. No. It's not, it's not pressure. Pause. Can you, can you, can you read from the screen? Oh, uh, yes, sir, I can read. Is it pause P? What is P? What is the blue line here? Uh, linear momentum of the system. Yeah, so it's a momentum. Okay, P is a momentum. What is momentum? Momentum, momentum. is mass times the velocity. Yes, mass times velocity. Okay, so uh, pay okay. attention uh, when I when I deliver lecture. Pay attention. Uh. If not, I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. to on, on your on your video cam already. Okay. Okay, so okay. So. so we replace the general uh, equation here. I will end here with our velocity vector, v times rho times dv. You get your momentum equation. Okay. Because uh, your momentum equal to mb. So rho dv, you get your m times the velocity. You get the momentum uh, inside the control volume. CV and integration of your CS. CS is a control surface. Okay. All right. So this is your um, momentum equation. Again, momentum, uh, we derive momentum um, by considering two term. One is what happened in the control volume, what happened in the control surface. Okay. okay, so this all these are mathematics uh, um, derivation. So we're going to look at um, uh, one particular exact time frame. We call it at a t equal to t0 with its initial time. And at this particular time, um, our control volume and system uh, meet at the same uh, same uh, core incline. Eh? They, both of them core incline means both of them meet together. So we can write our force on the system will equal to what happened to our control volume. So this equation apply to uh, that particular time or initial time where our system and control volume co-inclined together. Okay, so in the mathematical model, we can write F equal to F system equal to the control volume here. Okay. Then we can write for a non-accelerating control volume, which is a stable system. Non-accelerating means there's no change of velocity. All right, because if how you calculate acceleration, uh, uh, Pratiba, how to how to calculate acceleration? Acceleration is equals to distance of a uh, uh, no uh, distance over time. Distance over time, you get acceleration. No, no distance. Over time square, so t square. Okay, so uh, if you're given a, a velocity or given a speed, how do you get the acceleration? If I given a velocity and speed, is it? So, uh, okay, uh, acceleration is equal to ms negative 2, sir. Yeah, yeah. If you're okay. given a velocity, 
Okay, uh, velocity. Okay, velocity is equals to uh, okay, uh, v over t, sir. V over t. So you take velocity divided by time. So it's an integration. Uh, it's a differentiation over time. Means you yeah. take your velocity, uh, differentiate with time. Okay. So here you will see yes. the the equation on the screen here. Your total force equal to body force plus surface force equal to what happened in the control volume plus what happened in the control surface. So later we are going to look at the application of this uh, equation uh, in a, a, a tutorial question later on. So um, the third equation on the screen here is for non-accelerating uh, control volume. The next case we consider is when we have a uniform flow uh, in the system or at the inlet and exit, the equation will change a little bit on the control surface. Uh, on the control surface term, which is you see on the screen on the, on the uh, right, uh, right hand corner that I highlight with my mouse now, you will become a, a sum of all your uh, momentum at the control surface. So um, if you are considering a non-accelerating, you use a third equation on the screen. If you have a uniform flow, then you use the last equation on the screen here. Okay. So these two e equation, uh, we will apply these two in an example later on. Um, body force. In float mechanics, we consider uh, acting the action of gravitational force to a mass. So, um, um, okay, Pitiba, how you calculate uh, weight under acceleration effect? Ah uh, yes, sir. weight under yeah. acceleration. Yeah, how you if you're given okay. a body, so uh, the body with a mass, how you calculate the weight of that body mass? Ah, uh, uh, W equals to mg, sir. Correct. So um, okay. the following equation we use F equal to mg. So in um, fluid mechanics. We, we will use the integration of what happened to the um, control volume and gravity acting on the body. So we are calculating the body force. So body force equal to integration of your rho g uh, v or rho g and your uh, volume. So you can, in, in short, you can get the W equal to mg. So this is what you learn in your physics. And then um, the body force also, uh, sorry, surface force is due to pressure. So pressure, how you get force, you take pressure uh, times area, okay? Because pressure equal to force divided by area. So when you want to calculate the force, you just rewrite the equation. You arrive at F equal to P times A. So this is the uh, surface force. So again, from the slide on the screen here, you will see that for body force is due to gravity, surface force is due to pressure. So uh, we need to consider the effect of gravity and pressure. Yeah. So it will affect the equation that we use later on. Um, and a side note for uh, notation. So if we calculate the surface force, we will always consider negative sign in front of our pressure uh, because it is uh, always pointing to the control surface. Uh, it's always pointing to the control surface. So negative, it means that negative P in the, in the mathematic model or equation that you see on the screen here, it is because of the pressure force always acting onto the control surface. That's why we have a negative sign here. Um, and the A here, uh, 
um, we we'll always um, consider positive. So let's say you have a cube here, a, a, a pipe here, and the flow is coming up from this area. So this area, the A, is pointing out will always positive. Yeah? Uh, the direction of the area, when it's pointing out, it will always positive. Um, all right, so um, when you calculate the product of uh, pressure and A area later on, you will see you will need to uh, pay a little bit more attention to the uh, area, the, the direction of the uh, area, and also the, the volume, later on, uh, the velocity. Um, and then um, we combine these two equations. We can write our, not combine, but uh, we look at our, just now we mentioned that we have two scenario. Huh? We have two scenario of uh, momentum equation. Um, one on the top here and one and below here. On the top here is for non-accelerating uh, control volume. At the bottom here is for uniform flow. So um, on the top here, you see all the vector sign. So again, vector sign, you can have x, y, and z direction. So each one will change to i hat, j hat, and k hat here when you expand it. So uh, you can write your force equal, your total force equal to force x, i, plus f, y, j, plus f, z, k. This is how you write your resultant force. Let's say you have a force coming out from the origin like that. And this is the resultant force, fr equal to uh, expansion of uh, x direction, y direction, and z direction. Okay, so to save time, I write all the equation on the screen here. So if you only consider x direction, then you write your equation fx equal to f surface force at x direction plus body force at x direction equal to, and then you change the velocity component as u because if you, uh, as you learn in uh, your static or dynamic uh, module, if all the all the displacement of velocity in the x direction, we use u. All the velocity in y direction, we use v. And all the velocity in z direction, we use w. So in this case, we change the velocity in the momentum equation above with u. And for control surface, second term here, with u also. Then for the y component, you replace your velocity vector with v for the control volume. And the second term also you replace with v for the control surface. If you consider the z direction, then you change the v to the w. And then the second term for the control surface, you change it to W. Okay, so um, this is how we do it when we consider or we solve problems. So this one happened also in ANSYS. Um, you can select whether it's a 3D uh, uh, solution or a 2D solution. When you open up the Fluent and then you can select whether it's a 2D analysis problem or 3D analysis problem. So when you select 2D, it will cancel out. Uh, it will it will cancel out either one of and then you will focus on the axis that you define inside the system. Same for the second equation for the uniform flow also. Um, again, we change, if it's x direction, then we change the velocity. In x direction, we change to u. Uh, same with the second term here, the v we change to u. Then we consider y, your velocity you change to v, the second term here also change to v, the rest remain. And then if you consider z, then your velocity vector 
we change to W. The second term for control surface here will change to W. So uh, this is quite uh, straightforward and uh, uh, quite direct for the um, equation. Okay, we look at one example, uh, which is can find in the uh, your hands up. Huh? So you consider this example. So if you look at your hands out, it will be um, question 38. Okay, it will be question 38. So um, let's say we are holding a plate here, a T plate here with your hand, uh, or you're holding, actually you're holding a cylinder, cylindrical plate here, and then uh, you're standing behind or this, this plate here, you're standing behind this plate, and then somebody spray water onto the surface here. So uh, water from a stationary nozzle strike the flat plate as shown. The water leave the nozzle at 15 meter per second. It is here. Uh, v, um, okay, so uh, the velocity, it depends on the axis that you choose. If we write, uh, if we draw axis, this is an X, this is Y. So the velocity at, uh, or I put a big capital U, for the uh, velocity at the nozzle, which is 15 meter per second. Area nozzle here is 0 0.01 meter square. Assume water is direct normal to the plate. It is, if you draw a uh, invisible line, it will be 90 degree to the plate here. So flow along the plate. So after the water hit the plate here, the water will go this way. Okay. Determine the horizontal force that you need to resist to hold it in place. So you, what is the resistance force that you feel at this, um, at this region? Okay. So it's a resultant force that you need to find and then you convert the resultant force at here, resultant force at here, and then you convert to the force in this position, right? So later I'll show you how to how to do it. Okay. Now we we before we solve any question, we need to uh, be clear what is uh, given in the question. So we know that the water is stationary uh, from the stationary nozzle means nozzle do not move, and then it will direct. Uh, spray to the plate here and the subsequent flow is parallel to the plate here so there's a change of direction of your water so again momentum equal to mv mass times the velocity so be careful when the mass change direction so the velocity lift nozzle in this case we assume um, x is to the right so we can write 15, 1.5 I hat M stroke S. Nozzle area is 0 0.01 meter square. Uh, we need to find what do you, what do you feel when you hold this uh, plate um, as the water hit the plate here. Okay. So there are two uh, there are two solution that we can uh, that we can uh, solve. So um, we're going to show you these two method. Um, uh, because when you use ANSYS, you need to be careful to uh, define the domain. So the control volume here is your domain uh, when you simulate uh, the system. So we have a control volume one, which is the first case that we consider the water um, before hitting the plate and then including your hand also. Second, control volume, we only focus on um, from the nozzle and then the plate surfaces without the hand component. Okay, now I put the two diagram um, on the screen here, which is uh, put on the right on the screen. And then um, we will write out the governing equation that we have. So we know that the force, all the force 
inside the system consists of body force and surface force. And equal to what happened in the control volume plus what happened in the control surface. So uh, because of the uh, uh, momentum equation that we use, uh, our system equal to zero. So both of these equal to zero. All right. Now, um, the question here is that, are you able to differentiate which one is conservation of mass, which one is conservation of uh, equation? Which one is conservation of mass, which one is momentum equation, and why? Pritiba, which one is which one is conservation of mass? Which one is momentum equation? There are two equations on the screen. The first one or, uh, okay, or second uh, one? Which, okay, the conservation of mass is uh, the first one. Why? Uh, because uh, F is, uh, is equals to MA. So it has the mass, which is included in the conservation mass. And while the momentum is uh, M times B, so it should be the second one. The second one, how you how you get uh, M times V? Uh, basically, when your density, 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 V, and V. Okay, uh, that's all. Okay, uh, momentum of okay, momentum equation. Uh, momentum equation m equal, momentum is equal to m times v. So mm. when I well, it has constant volume and it has the constant volume, so I I guess it's a momentum equation, sir. We look at the second one rho v times dA. What do you get? Rho v times dA. Rho v times dA. Rho. Uh, density V times D area A V uh, A rho V uh, rho velocity times area what you get velocity times area uh, velocity times area Velocity times area. Velocity times area. I will get a uh, wait. So m s negative one. Okay. okay, I'm doing a dimensionless uh, analysis here. What is the unit of density? M s cube. M s cube, sir. Density. What is the unit for density? M s negative three. M. M S. Negative three. Yeah. That is density. Okay. Are you sure what is density? Me, uh, sir, the M over S cube, sir. S cube. What is S? S is second, sir. Time. Okay. You you now you Google what is the density of water? Oh sorry, okay okay. Kg m negative three sir. Kg m negative three. Kg over meter uh over uh meter cube. Yeah. What is the velocity you need? Uh, MS negative one. Meter per second. What yeah. is the area? What is the area you need? Uh, M square. So these two combine, you cancel. Okay. 
So at the end, what do you get? Kg per second. Kg per second. Yeah. How do you how do you link with uh momentum or how you dealing with conservation of mass? Okay, kg per second is uh, mass over time. Yeah. So what do you see here? It's mass only mass over right? time, which it should. Uh, mass over time, sir. Yeah. So this one is conservation of mass. You okay. look at the first the first equation. Rho mm -hmm. time rho time rho time volume. What do you get? Rho times volume. Uh rho times volume we will get a mass. Times a V. Uh times V we will get uh a momentum. Uh. So MV equal to momentum. Okay. okay sir. So this is mm. how you differentiate, yeah. So uh, mm -mm -mm. this is how you how you identify, okay. So um, okay. You need to be aware of all these things. Okay, we in this example we assume that our flow is steady, and then we are having. Um, steady flow in compressible and we have a uniform flow across the control volume, right? Both control volume here. So uh, because it is a steady flow, so um, since we have a steady flow, it means there is no change of velocity. So the first term here is velocity versus uh, differentiate with time. So the first term uh, equals zero. So steady flow, we don't have the, the first term here. Uh, same with the second one. Okay, so yeah. And then the, the first equation, you arrive at only the second term. Force equal to body force plus surface force equal to integration of your surface uh, control surface uh, entity. Same with the uh, uh, conservation of mass. You only consider what happened to the control surface. All right, rho v dot dA equals zero. So your momentum equation and conservation of equation reduce to the two equation that you see on the bottom of the screen here. All right, so uh, just a side note, if you evaluate, if, if you are calculating the momentum flux terms, uh, it will it will arrive at the same answer for scenario one on the screen and scenario two on the center of the screen here. The answer will be the same, um, even there are two uh, different control volume here. The answer will be the same because what is in will equal to what is out. So the answer at the end will still uh, remain same. So we look at control volume one. Huh? So control volume one, we are looking at the horizontal force from the left to right. So we consider x direction only in the momentum equation. So just now on the top of the screen here, our force equal to body force plus uh, surface force equal to summation of all the u component in x direction. So what happened in, in the u direction, it will change to u to represent, we only consider x direction, then rho v dot dA. We cannot change the rho vector here because it's a dot product, okay? It's a dot product. And uh, there's no body force in the x direction. Uh, why? Why there's no body force, uh, Pritiba? Why there is no body force in x direction? Yeah. 
because the body direction is only at the uh, y and z only sir okay so what is the equation for body force body force is under under what effect body force is under uh, wait a second just now i asked you the question uh, about the mass mass under what effect just now you give me one expression right I asked you, right? ask you about weight, right? Wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, Lisa. Lisa, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Why there's no body force in oh. the direction? What is body force linked to? Body force linked to. Body force linked to. Uh, so, uh, body force linked to the uh, uh, volume times rho dv, sir. Again, what? Sorry, sir? Volume. Volume times uh, rho times dv. 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 What does it mean? What does the... Uh, Okay, why why we can convert mass into weight? Why? Why we can convert kilogram to newton? Uh, it's because we have gravity. What is the direction of gravity? Uh, negative direction downward, sir. Yeah, downward. So this answer why there is no body force. Body force only link up with the gravitational effect on the mass so w equal to mg just now direction of g is going y direction so y direction is j hat so this explains why there is no body force in x direction okay so we cancel the body force okay, component sir. at the okay. end our okay. for control volume uh, our momentum equation arrive at u rho v dot a. Okay, so this is uh, for control volume one. Our momentum equation arrive at a very simple uh, presentation like you see on the screen here. Mm -mm, not this. Right, then the next one, we need to draw the free body diagram. But on your screen, you will see the free body diagram that I draw for you. Uh, which is um, what you see on the screen here. So the dotted line is the control volume. We have pressure acting on the left and right because um, what acting on the on the left is your atmospheric pressure. What acting on the uh, right here also is the atmospheric pressure. However, there will be a re reaction force acting on the hand here to stop the flow and then there is a w weight the body force going down so you if you refer it to control surface uh, control volume number one your bo free body diagram will look like this so you have your ry rx on the right here um, and you can cancel the atmospheric pressure for left and right here um, and then the, there's a body force pointing down. So we can write our surface force in x direction will be uh, we taking our atmospheric pressure times the area the acting on the left hand side of the control volume minus the pressure from the right 
times the area, then um, our Rx is to the right, we assume to the right, so we have a positive Rx according to the free body diagram on the right here. Okay. So this is quite straightforward. And at this point, we assume it's a positive our, for our Rx. So we cancel these two. Uh, we cancel the atmospheric uh, P times A minus P times A, same. At the end, we arrive at Rx. So we substitute back to the um, momentum equation that we derived just now, equal to sum of U rho V dot A. So in here, we only have uh, one area. So we further simplify our equation equal to u rho v dot a1. a1 means uh, at uh, point here, huh? area here. Um, for uh, top and bottom surface, we assume um, our u is zero because there is no u. Um, let me see if I include the diagram. Okay, at point one, let me see here. Okay, so the one here is the substitution of A here. All right, now why suddenly the Rx will become um, negative u1 rho v1 a1. It is because when you your flow come out from the, the area here, okay, you look at the We look at the diagram from here. So your A and V. The angle between your velocity and area is 180 degree apart. Because uh, in our control volume here on the left, this is a point one. So the area of this control volume here, the area is the area is pointing to the left, and the velocity is coming in to the this is V coming in to the surface there. So if I uh, draw the free body diagram at uh, control volume at number one or at the left hand side of the diagram here, you will see that the area is to the left and the velocity is going into the uh, uh, the control volume here. So the products of A times V here, you get the negative. Okay, you get the negative. So that's why when we convert from um, the above the vector v dot a, when you convert, you will get negative rho v1 a1. Okay, meaning you look at the if you look at the vector, you need to be careful on the relationship on the area and vector at that particular point. So at point one. Your area is to the left. The velocity is going to the right. So um, if it's a different area, a uh, different direction, then you get a negative sign for Rx. Understand, yeah? Yes, sir. 
Okay. So the rest is the substitution of uh, all the uh, value. So Rx equal to negative 15 meter per second times 999 is your row of the water. Um, V1 is given 15 um, and area equal to uh, 0 0.01 meter square. So you convert into Newton, right? So one Newton second square over kilogram mit, uh, mit, uh, meter, you convert into uh, Newton. Yeah? So all these parameter uh, you convert because um, one Newton equal to what? Uh? So force equal to MA um, by second Newton law. So we do the dimensional analysis. Mass is kilogram. Acceleration is meter over second square. So um, kilogram dot meter over second square will be equal to one Newton. So you convert eh, after you, you take the velocity times density times velocity times area, you arrive at something um, kilogram over meter square, you convert to uh, Newton. So at the end, you get negative 2.25 kilonewton. So Rx is negative because initially uh, from a free body diagram on the screen here, your Rx is to the right. However, but your answer is negative. So your Rx will be to the left. So the resultant that acting on the hand will be equal to 2.25 kilonewton. Okay. So this is how you calculate based on control volume um, number one. Okay, number one. So let's um, continue with control volume number two. Um, so Control volume number two is quite uh, more simpler if you look at the screen here. So control volume number two, you only seeing a small portion and um, you only have um, atmospheric pressure on the left on the control surface here. And then you have a BX to the right. So you include the free body diagram. Uh, one is the control volume. Another one on the right here is uh, on the object that you're holding. So uh, the BX, uh, because um, the BX is to the right, then on the surface of the plate here, will go to the left to balance the two force. And the RX will to the right, RY will go up and atmospheric pressure uh, on the right hand side to the left. So. Uh, the diagram that you see on the screen here, one is for the control volume, and then another one is for the um, reaction force that you that you feel uh, while holding the plate. So we, we're going to use these two free body diagram to solve our question here. So again, there is no body uh, force uh, in X direction uh, because body force is due to the gravity or gravity going down, so there is no x direction force. So again, we rewrite the equation just now. So we consider x direction force equal to u rho v dot a. This is a, a momentum equation. Then we calculate what is your fx from the free body diagram. fx, you have the pressure times the area here, area of the plate plus Bx will equal to the force to the right. And then for the uh, Fx here, um, you just now we already, we already derived the same steps. You get uh, U rho V dot A1, you will still arrive at negative 2.25 kilonewton because V dot A, you get a negative, um, negative velocity, uh, uh, get a negative 
um, velocity times the area in this sense, and then you substitute all the value in, you get negative 2.25 kilonewton. So the BX value, if you substitute 2.2 negative 2.25 uh, on the left, so you'll get BX equal to negative P atmospheric plus the plate negative 2.25. And then you use back the uh, free body diagram that we uh, that we draw on the screen just now. So it, on the screen here, you see there's a plate with all the forces acting on it. And then you have all the equilibrium force equal to zero. So all the force to the X equal to zero. BX, you get negative sign because it's going to the left. Uh, atmospheric pressure going to the left. Uh, again, you need to convert the atmospheric pressure to force. You take pressure times area. So pressure, you take atmospheric pressure times the area of the plate here, plus the uh, Rx. Rx is, we assume, is to the right here. So you continue to rearrange the equation. So you get Rx equal to Bx plus atmospheric pressure times the eight plate. So you substitute for Bx. Just now we derive what is our Bx here. Our Bx equal to negative uh, pressure times area, negative 2.25, you substitute inside here. You get this equation on the screen. So you cancel these two. At the end, you arrive at 2.25. Okay, the Rx is still 2.25. So the Kx that you feel on the hand will be positive 2.25. Kilonewton. Okay. All right. So um, let me stop the recording. <laughs>